So the topic of this video is kind of a consequence of that zero product property solving quadratic method that we talked about in our last video. Um, I kind of have the steps up here, but basically we're going to look at how you actually graph something when it's in factored form. So when it's already been factored completely. If you look at this example right here, this is actually something if I asked you guys to graph that, you would probably have to do FOIL, then distribute your 4, then do, um, it'd be in standard form density, you'd do opposite B over 2A, and that would work just fine. Um, this is just another method, and this topic or this idea I'm going to teach you is kind of important in higher, like in later chapters. So um, while yes, you could graph this in other ways, it gets at a really important point. So the instructions are up here for this, um, and I'm going to kind of leave that up there for now. I'll refer back to it in a little bit, but I want to kind of just get into the problem for a little bit first. So what I'm going to do right here is plug in... I'm going to look at these numbers right here and kind of treat it like those problems I was doing in the last section with the zero product property. What numbers would make this equal zero? And it turns out that if I plug in a 1 for x, I'm going to get 4, I'll do it over here, 4 times 1 minus 1 times 1 minus 3. So I get 4 times 0 times negative 2, although it doesn't really matter. I end up with a zero. So if I plug in a 1 for x, I get out a zero for y. That means that the point 1, 0 is on this graph. Similarly, if I plug in a 3 for x, this guy ends up being 0. 0 times 2 times 4 is still equal to 0. So if I plug in a 3 for x, I also get out a 0 for y. So if I kind of pretend this was equal to 0 here, and I look at this as a 0 product property problem, the numbers that work in here are like these points right here, which if you recall back to an earlier chapter, these are x-intercepts. The y is equal to zero. So whatever value makes y equal zero, whatever numbers you can plug in right here to make it equal zero, those are called the x-intercepts on your graph. And there's actually two other names for these points um, that you'll use a lot more in more advanced classes. So you gotta know all three. They're called x-intercepts. They're also called zeros and roots. All of those mean the same thing. They're talking about these kind of points on a graph. So if I were to graph this parabola, I know that 1, 0 is on the graph, and I know that 3, 0 is on the graph. So I have those two dots right there. Now, parabolas are symmetric. They're the same thing on each side, so the axis of symmetry has to be right here, otherwise it wouldn't be a mirror image like that. So I know my vertex has to be halfway in between those two points, because that's going to be the middle part of my parabola. So in this particular problem, my vertex... And I am going a tiny bit off screen here. Sorry about that. My vertex is going to be at 2 comma something. You kind of find the halfway point in between your two roots here. Another way of doing that, if you remember back from geometry, you add up the numbers and you divide by 2. And that will get you the 2 for the midpoints. Now all I have to do is plug in a 2 for x and see what I get out. And that will be my y. So I'm going to put a 2 in right here and a 2 in right here so I can see what I get. I'll get 4 times that first parenthesis is a 1, times a negative 1, it appears that I will get out a negative 4. So my vertex is at 2 comma negative 4. And now I have three points. Remember, that's all you need to make a parabola. I can just connect those into my graph, and I am good to go. So now I have my graph there um, using the roots and finding the midpoint of them to get the vertex. We're going to do one more example of this in our video. So this um, quadratic is not even in factored form. This is standard form. And you guys have been trained right now. You know how to graph this with negative b over 2a using our little formula and going from there. And that's fine. It'll work. It'll get you the exact same answer. Just for the purposes of our video, though, I want to show you that it can be done a different way. Now, I'm not going to show the factoring, the magic numbers and all that on this because I think you guys are good with that. Um, but if you actually pull out a GCF and so on, you end up with this. So you get 2 and then you get x times x plus 3. And then we get an x minus 1 right here. So this is what this guy factors into, if you were to do magic numbers just on that part. So I'm going to look at this now, and I'm going to decide where my x-intercepts are. Where are the roots, or the zeros, whatever you want to call them for this graph? They're going to be at negative 3, comma 0. Because if you plug in a negative 3, you get out a 0. They're also going to be at positive 1, comma 0. So those are going to be my x-intercepts. I'm going to go ahead and toss those on my graph right now. There's 1, 0. There's negative 3, 0. 
So the only thing I have to do now is figure out my vertex. The vertex has to be halfway in between these points, which will end up being right here at negative 1. And again, if you didn't see that, you can just add them up and then divide by 2. You're going to get negative 2 over 2 is negative 1. So my vertex is negative 1 comma, and to figure out what that something is, I just plug it in for x. So I'm going to get negative 2 times 2 times negative 2. Looks like I will get out a negative, no, a positive, I'm sorry, positive 8. So I'm going to go to negative 1 comma positive 8. I'm going to plot my points, and then I can graph my parabola based on the three points that I have there. So once something's in factored form, you can pick out those x-intercepts, those zeros, really quickly.